Welcome to the Myla Mechanics. I'm Torsten. And I'm Jan. What we're going to do today is show you how to do a professional brake disc replacement. First off, when changing the brake discs, make sure to change the pads too. Otherwise, what happens is that the brake pad's wear pattern grinds into the new brake disc. And before long, that will be damaged too. There is also a video on this procedure, which you can find on our homepage. Today we are going to work with the Myla Platinum Disc. We proudly present... Most of our Platinum Discs come with the locating screws included. The brake disc has a UV finish. The benefit being that it has superb anti-corrosion properties compared to standard coating techniques, such as zinc flake. Another big plus, it makes for a shining appearance that won't fade, not even when it's undergone rim cleaner treatment. And last but not least, it is a ready-to-fit kit, which requires no cleaning, as there's no oil film. It's just pick and plug. Let's get going then. We're now going to demonstrate a brake disc change on a Skoda Superb. I've already jacked the car, because obviously the first thing to do is remove the tires. But before we start, let's examine adjacent chassis parts with our joint play tester. Vibration in the steering wheel does not necessarily come from the brake disc. Defective hydro mounts or worn bushings are also likely candidates for causing steering wheel wobble when the brakes are applied. Let's get the wheel off. Is removed. First of all, I'm going to examine the brake hose to see if it's brittle or cracked. I'm also pulling the assembly slightly towards my direction to give me better access. The brake hose looks good. Now I'm removing the wear warning contact of the brake pads. Then I take off the two protective covers to get access to the slide pins, which can be removed using a 7mm Allen key. What I'm going to do next is remove these locating springs from the caliper. Which then allows me to remove the entire caliper assembly. I always use this opportunity to inspect the caliper for any damage or corrosion. Nothing of which can be seen here. To prevent the caliper from getting in our way while we're working, Torsen will use this hook I have constructed myself and hook it in the coil spring, pull the caliper towards it, and that's it. Now we are going to remove the caliper bracket. This isn't necessary on all vehicles, but here it is. Once Jan has removed the caliper bracket, he can easily slacken and remove the locating screw. Before installing the new brake disc, what you need to do is clean the wheel hub, caliper bracket and slide pins. To clean the hub, it is best to use a wheel hub grinder. Position it like this and give the hub a good cleaning. For the brake caliper, a simple steel brush does the job. What you need to clean is the brake pad support. For the slide pins, after taking them out, of course, we use some sandpaper to remove any dirt. And 
and apply some grease. To make sure they'll move smoothly in the caliper. We're now using a dial gauge to check that everything is as it should be, to make sure no juddering, wobbling or jittering comes from the brakes when driving. Turning the wheel hub now allows you to read off lateral runout. Zero would be ideal. Up to 0.04 millimeters is acceptable. In our case, the measurement is well within the range of tolerance. Since we are working with a ready-to-fit brake disc, all I have to do is take it from its box and fit it on the car. Watch this video to see just how much trouble this can save you. Jan, ain't done yet. Don't rush me. Now the brake cleaner is getting low. What a tedious and costly job. So, as you've seen in this time-lapse video, mounting a ready-to-fit brake disc can save you a lot of time and money. Now we're going to measure the brake disc's lateral runout. To do this, it's best to position the dial gauge just the way we did earlier. Jan is positioning the feeler at about 20 millimeters from the edge and makes one full rotation of the disc. Here, too, there is a tolerance range, with zero being, of course, the optimum. At the bottom of the screen, you can see the rule of thumb, which you can use to calculate the actual lateral runout of the brake disc or wheel hub. What we're going to do next is reassemble the parts. This is the moment to remember to replace the pads too. But this is shown in another video. So for now, we're just putting everything back together. Once you're done, it's important to pump the brake pedal a couple of times until pedal stroke remains stable at constant pedal load. The reason for this is that there's a gap between the new brake pads and disc, and pumping the pedal is how to get rid of it. If you fail to do this, your brakes won't deliver the power they're supposed to immediately after the change. This is why it's really important to pump the pedal. And try not to slam on the brakes on the first 200 or so kilometers. Unless you really have to, of course. Be careful to bed in the pads and brake discs properly on the first 200 kilometers, and you'll enjoy your new brake discs for a long time. As you can see, changing the brake discs is not rocket science. For those of you who are already looking for the platinum disc to fit their car, check out our website, www.milo.com. That's all from us. See you next time. Bye for now.